Jesus says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. So, have you ever wondered where the word Monday comes from? Today is Monday, Thursday, right? Sometimes we call it Holy Thursday. I guess that's because maybe somebody would say, I wonder what Monday actually means. Well, actually, Monday comes from the Latin word for mandate or command. Now you know. Tonight we gather in God's house to remember Jesus and his disciples who gathered in a house just similarly. Celebrate the Passover together. Preparations were made by the disciples to keep the tradition pure because that was so very, very important. After all, they're preparing this for the Messiah. But wait! Jesus is going to throw a monkey wrench into the Passover tradition. Foot washing? Okay, for me, that's disgusting. Linnell has asked me from time to time, to go and get a pedicure. But I'll tell you this, I know what my feet like, look like and I don't want to touch them, so why would I want somebody else to touch them, right? But Jesus washes feet. Jesus, the God of the universe, wraps a towel around his waist, pours some water in a bowl, and wash the dirty, stinking feet of his disciples. I think that's incredible. I probably wouldn't do it. But of course, this is the Son of God. The Son of God who takes on a human body, lived life as just as one of us. So Jesus would always do the unexpected. But this one, whoa, this is one probably even more surprising to them than anything else that they had seen. Washing. Your hands before dinner, we get that. So, what is he doing besides the obvious thing of cleaning their feet? Just, what is Jesus up to? The answer, Jesus is showing what it means to serve others. Don't believe for a second that this is some type of a ceremonial act. Oh no, not at all. Jesus' example of service makes a powerful point, all the more powerful, that we are to serve others. The fact that the master is willing to serve his disciples. A task, lowly, filthy work, they would never consider doing for him nor for one another. And yet, the one with authority over all things, has everything in his hand, literally lowers himself before them and washes their feet. Those who had been on those dirty, dusty roads. And he scrubs them clean. He dries between their toes. They are fully clean. But it's not just to make a point. Jesus does a job until their feet are perfectly clean, each foot of every disciple. There's really no greater, greater model of humble service than what Jesus does for his disciples. When we see how he served through his miracles, we see how he served through his selfless acts like this ultimately serving with his death on the cross, you and I can be changed too. You and I can be continually made more and more like Jesus. For us, that's going to take practice, practice, practice. You and I need to look for ways to serve and then act upon them through the power of the Holy Spirit who lays them all out before us. And then besides practice, 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 it also takes humility, humility, humility. 
So let me ask you, do you think Jesus was smiling when he washes the disciples' feet? I do. Do you think Jesus was wondering if they were deserving to have their feet washed by the Master, the very Son of God? No way. Jesus showed joy day in and day out, humbly serving people his entire time on this earth. So then when Jesus finishes this humiliating job, he rejoins the disciples at dinner around that table. And he asks them, what? Do you understand what I've just done? Don't you just love Peter? He speaks basically for all of them. Because he admits, he just doesn't get it. Why would you wash my feet? Peter hadn't volunteered to wash feet. And yet made much more sense to him for Jesus to be washed. So in typical Peter's fashion, he stands his ground, doesn't he? And what's he say? You will never wash my feet. I think sometimes we miss the response that Jesus says because I think it does it very beautifully. And it reveals to us that it's more than just washing feet and having clean feet. Jesus says, if I don't wash you, you have no part in, with me. Looking deeper into that statement, Jesus is telling us that he forgives us all of our sins. Jesus gives us his righteousness, his cleanliness. He makes us completely clean. This is the true picture of what Jesus visibly and tangibly demonstrating his heart for the church, his heart for us, his desire for us to forgive sins and to be forgiven. And he gives us this Monday, this commandment demonstrating that heart for the church and our desire to forgive sins. He says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. When you and I listen to this command of Jesus, we clearly see that Jesus wants followers who will live their lives serving one another. Not just have moments when we serve others that it just seems to happen or we say, oh, today I'm going to do whatever. But look for opportunities that are put in our way by the Holy Spirit. Instead of walking around those opportunities, ignoring those opportunities, as it would be looking the other way, take the task at hand, just as Jesus did. Tonight, we celebrate the Feast of the Lord's Supper in the presence of the Master. Jesus Christ's presence is right here at his table when we do this in remembrance of Jesus. Preparations for tonight's feast, they're made by the altar guild for you and me to humbly take and eat the very body and blood of Jesus along with the bread and the wine. And then humbly with that bread and wine remember in our hearts that this is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And tonight and every night, when we leave having had the Lord's Supper, we leave in that humble joy that our sins are forgiven. We have before us Da Vinci's picture. You didn't think I could get a hold of one, did you? Yep, I did. Now, if you're close enough, you might want to look under the table. You probably never thought of it before, but those are all clean feet that are underneath that table, right? Yeah, absolutely. You ever look at this picture again, I know what you're going to do. You're going to think, oh, yeah, that's right, those feet are clean. One more remarkable painting than this one is one that is done by Van Gogh. And I'm sorry, I wasn't able to go to the Louvre and have that one brought here for us tonight. So I'm just going to kind of have to explain what this is. 
This shows Jesus humbly kneeling before Peter. He's got the top half is kind of bare. He's got the towel around his waist. And he's got Peter's feet right in his hand, and he's washing them. And you see Peter, Simon Peter. He's an old guy, by the way, according to Van Gogh. He's an old guy bearded down to here. And he's not making eye contact with Jesus. He is just looking at what Jesus is doing for him. Peter, the one who gets that collar all the time, right? The one who would deny Jesus. Jesus is washing his feet in advance of that. He, Jesus, the creator of everything, the king of the universe, bows down to wash the feet of all people because Jesus came not to judge. Jesus came to save. So tonight as we leave in silence from God's house, maybe in that silence we can take a moment to contemplate God's work in us. Tomorrow night we will gather right here once again on Good Friday. And what will we see? We will see the continuation of Jesus Christ humbly serving us, his self-sacrifice and his love. And in that all God's people say, Amen. Amen.